All right, welcome to uh, the August meeting for Mid City Neighborhood Organization. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm Chris Bloom, I'm board president, um, and we are trying to keep our neighborhood informed and organized and try and have a little bit of fun as well. Um, we have a couple of organizational announcements I want to promote first. Um, but before we do that, uh, if you don't have a copy of the of the agenda this evening, I'm putting a link to the the notice we sent out in the chat. Please use either the chat or the comment form for any questions or uh, comments you may have uh, for anyone presenting or, or speaking this evening. And uh, that link is in that comment is in that uh, agenda I just sent out. So um, yeah, we are. If you don't know, if this is your first meeting, all of our meetings are open to the public. Uh, we usually meet at Warren Easton High School at the same time, uh, the second Monday every month. And unfortunately, since you know we're not we're discouraged from meeting in large numbers, and most schools are closed, um, we are not doing anything in person for the foreseeable future, really. So until things change. Um, just messed up my own layout and lost my train of thought. Uh, so exciting things coming up. Uh, we are we usually do a beautification service project um, organized service day in memoriam of the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Um, we've done a, a couple trash pickups that have been kind of loose and, and spread out, but we probably we figured we we wanted to do something a little more. Um, fun and a lot more socially distanced. So uh, the block captains have come up with this great idea to do uh, self-paced, self-guided service project days uh, starting on the 22nd and spanning to the 7th. Um, you're totally encouraged to do any sort of trash pickups and things uh, you know, outside of those dates. But what we're doing is we're trying to encourage uh, service projects um, that are detailed on that link provided uh, with, you know, with a reward of gift cards from our local businesses that we've purchased for giveaways. So if you could, you know, perform a service project within Mid City, um, take yourself take a picture of doing of doing that service project, whether it's cleanup or any other things that are detailed on that website, um, mcnote.org slash k15. Um, it's also a place where you can submit your photos if you don't use social media. So social media, I believe the hashtag is, uh, I believe our hashtag is uh, MidCityK15. Otherwise, you can use our webpage, mcnewo.org slash k15. There'll be uh, an upload link for any photos of these service projects you can provide. Um, starting on the 22nd of August. So um, so if anybody's interested, please check out the information there. We're going to promote it, be promoting it pretty heavily. Um, we have uh, 10 different neighborhood uh, businesses that we're going to be giving away gift cards to to drive business and attention to them. So um, thanks so much if you're thinking about participating and uh, looking forward to the fun that we can have with uh, the K-15. Um, we're also, uh, block captains had also wanted to solicit the neighborhood for some outstanding road work um, sites around Mid-City. If you could use our comment form to submit that information, it's easier to compile uh, and pass that information along to Road Work NOLA. Anything that you see, I mean, Group A road work plan project should be wrapping up um, this fall. So if you could, if you know anything that's outstanding or just been, has not been getting any attention or has just not been, uh, had any, any work done to it in, in, you know, consecutive weeks, please use that comment form to provide that information. Um, we're also working on a uh, pavement removal project. We've gotten some funding from the city of New Orleans and uh, in the form of a, a cleanup grant that we applied for. And we're still looking for some other financing and volunteers that may be interested in doing some manual label, labor, um, wielding machinery, 
uh, some power tools and things to clean up uh, some excess pavement on that corner of Eola and South Scott streets. Um, it's part of a beautification measure and also part of a, a, a stormwater reduction measure. Um, we've gotten uh, we've gotten some uh, assurances from that business on the corner. It's it's the mental health services uh, building on that corner of Eola and South Scott has agreed to uh, have some of their pavement be torn up for this project. So please email me at president at .org if you're interested in volunteering. We don't really have a date set. We're still trying to get all budgeting figured out, but um, knowing that people may be interested could help us move that along quicker. And then uh, we also wanted to promote that the security district is, uh, is in need of a commissioner. Uh, we recently had a commissioner that had to roll off doing to, due to moving out of the neighborhood. And so there's a two year term uh, set to be filled in that position. So um, to qualify, you have to be a registered voter in, in the district of, in, within the security district. Um, and I believe that is the only, uh, that's the only restriction for qualification. So uh, if you could either email myself, president at MCNO or MCSD at mcno.org. Uh, we have a questionnaire for anyone who's interested, just kind of gauging their interest and their existing knowledge on the security district and how it operates. Um, so, well, well, that's all I have for our organizational business. We're gonna move on with the rest of our agenda this evening. Um, Nelly from uh, Lafitte Greenway is here to promote uh, a planning meeting they have coming up soon on the 10th. So go ahead, take it away. On the 11th, it's tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. Um, thank goodness it's not the 10th. Yeah. Because <laughs> we are all here. Um, let's see here. Which window is this? This one. Can you see my slides? Um, um, am I hearing a yes? Yes. Sorry. Great. I wasn't here. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm Nellie Katzen. I'm program director at Friends of Lafitte Greenway. My colleague, John Coyle, is also on the line. He is a Greenway ambassador and also the project lead for Urbanscapes, the design build firm that's working on this project. Um, Friends of Lafitte Greenway works to build, program, and promote the Greenway as a great public space. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces on here, so I know a lot of folks here are familiar with our work. We work in partnership with Nord to build, program, and promote the Greenway. Um, they own and manage it, and we bring projects like this to um, to the Greenway and to the city. So um, many folks are familiar with the old brake tag station. The city just did a really beautiful uh, transformation of that site into a, a pavilion where they'll be able to have programming and event rentals. Um, and we got a grant from the Clarity Parks Project. It's a partnership of the Project for Public Spaces and Claritin to really start to transform the driveway of that old site into a pedestrian plaza with art, music, uh, sorry, art, uh, seating, landscaping. It's a small scope project. It's only $40,000. It's really meant to bring this site online into the public consciousness and integrate it into the Greenway and set the stage for future development. For orientation here, you've got the bayou up there marked in purple, the Greenway Trail here. Um, the plaza site sits right across the street from Parkway Bakery's parking lot, uh, and the break tag pavilion is near Lopez Street. Um, we've gotten a lot of community input on this site, in particular in the Greenway Master Plan uh, in 2013, at our annual Hike the Lafitte Greenway events, especially in the last several years. Um, and people really want to see uh, place more places for people to gather as and for people to just be outside outside of their homes especially during coronavirus here um, here's a picture of the break tag pavilion if you haven't been by um, it's set to be hosting fitness classes um, through Nord this fall um, COVID willing um, the anchor project for the site we're really excited about is Iris of Memory, this beautiful iconic sculpture of an iris. Uh, it's a memorial sculpture to um, Deborah Vorhoff, an artist, mother, and teacher um, who passed away a couple of years ago. 
Um, this is in partnership with the Arts Council, a separate project, but it's all going to be coming online at the same time. Um, this sculpture is going to be located at the front of the site. You can see in the bottom corner here, we have this. Um, it's marked in, in pink, um, right at where the, the Greenway meets the Bayou meets Jefferson Davis Parkway. Um, right now, again, I said it's a very small budget. It's about $40,000, and we're focusing on the front of the site to start the transformation. Um, here's some of the uses that we've thought about um, that John and his design team have been working on. Um, the yellow and orange are places for landscaping. We're going to fix up the bioswale in that section, um, plant some nice new plants. Um, you can see in red, separating spots to make sure that it's closed to cars. Um, the area between the pavilion and the and the plaza will still will remain uh, parking and will also um, ho host some of the load in for the Crescent City Farmers Market. The Thursday market at uh, the American Can is actually moving over to the site. We're really excited about as soon as they're back open in person, of course. Um, we have an online survey up now on our website at lafitgreenway.org slash plaza. And tomorrow we're hosting a virtual public meeting. Uh, on Zoom. The information for both is on our website. Tomorrow's meeting's at 6 p.m. Um, LafitteGreenway.org slash plaza has the info. Um, does anybody have any, do we have a moment for questions? Yeah, I think so. Any of course, input? most of the, most of the questions I anticipate getting uh, at the at the community meeting tomorrow, if you're able to make it. But in case you're not able to make it, and since we have this here now, um, thank you. John has just dropped into the chat the links for both the public meeting, uh, the link for the public meeting. Lafitgreenway.org <laughs> slash plaza has the survey. Great. And we included the, the links to the event page in our agenda that went out earlier today. So. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, that's great work. I hope you get some really positive or some constructive feedback uh, at tomorrow's meeting. I hope to make it. Thanks. We're delighted. The, um, the last thing I didn't mention is that this is a really fast project. This mm -hmm. will be in place by the end of November. So really working to quickly meet the demand for more public spaces to get outside and, uh, and get active and keep your distance. Yeah, please, this is the time to provide feedback on the development. So take the opportunity and, and give, them a, give them a few words. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, um, District A Council Member Joseph Giarusso. Thank you, Joe, for coming tonight. Hey, Chris, thank you. And I heard Nina chime in earlier. I think Claire's on as well. So you've got a lot of District A representation. Um, on the call tonight. I hope everybody's doing well. And I want to reiterate what Chris said at the very top of this. Um, we're going to all of our neighborhood meetings. And since COVID, I don't think I've been to one in person. So the way that y'all are handling this is beautiful and, and very much in line with how um, all the neighborhood meetings that, that we've attended and are still meeting are doing it. Uh, I know Chris wanted me to talk about a couple of things. The first is um, the hookah bar. And, and let me say this, um, unless we hear about something, um, we don't know about it and, and it's not an excuse. It's just until it comes to our door, we don't know. Chris, I think you were actually the first person to reach out and to tell us about it. Um, as, as Nelly was talking, I was scrolling through social media and saw a WDSU had a story on and clearly showed a car peeling out and all the smoke and all the things that were happening both on the hookah side of the street as well as the shell station side of the street. So I've seen it now with my own two eyes. Um, I, I guess the way I feel right now with, with barely 24 hours to completely digest this is there seems to be a disconnect between what I'm hearing from neighbors and so far what I'm hearing like from the police. The police say they've been out a few times, it hasn't been that bad, and I've now gotten three or four emails not including Chris's that are saying it's horrible and there are more people than can be counted and it's not being taken care of. So 
the last email I got was from a from a separate restaurateur, and I copied the police department safety and permits and code enforcement on it, saying, "Look, we really need a deep dive here." And and as I'm hearing and seeing more, what what's what at least is being told to me as a public official from inside is not matching anecdotally what I'm hearing from residents. So we will continue to be to be on top of it and, and we want to help with this problem. And uh, certainly know there's nothing worse than when you live next to some place that either has become a nuisance or has a nuisance bar. So we, we wanna we wanna make sure if there's anything we can do that 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 we're on top of it. So uh, Chris, I'll continue to report to you as we hear and see what else we can get if that's all right. Sure. Um, the other thing Chris asked me, I think primarily to report on is um, is the sewage and water board. Um, and I see I see the comment about the trash is horrible. Um, one of the one of the buildings that's right behind it, um, a gentleman emailed right before I left the office to say that it's been a real problem behind the building as well. So I appreciate that comment. That was certainly um, uh, aligns with something somebody else told us too. Uh, the other thing I want, like I said, sewage and water board. Um, look, we are keenly aware that that there's sewage and water board problems. Um, we, we asked sewage and water board to do some things differently back in April. Those um, were not accomplished. Uh, the, what we're seeing is primarily bills falling into one or two categories. Either the bill is just like flat out grossly wrong. So somebody's billed $3,000, $10,000. Um, I got a $30,000 bill from somebody a little while ago and then another hundred thousand dollar bill that's the highest i've seen so far and sewage and water board said that wasn't actually a bill but it had every indicia that i've seen of a bill ever and so it, it's out of whack the other thing people are seeing is that sewage and water board will do usually like an estimated read for 17 18 or 19 days and then they'll do a catch-up read for like 40, 41, 42, 43 days, and then they want to average those together. But the problem is your consumption is generally based on like 3,000 gallons a month. And if you're over 30 days, certainly closer to 40, 41, 42, 43 days, your consumption is certainly higher than that. So there's a surcharge that's being added. So that's an additional problem. Um, we have we had somebody, and I'm chuckling about it, but it's, it's really not funny. Um, another person who today got two bills from Sewage and Water Board, each with the same date but with different amounts. So they didn't know which one to pay because one had one amount, one had another. So these problems are throughout the city. Um, they're throughout District A. What, what we try to do to deal with this um, is is actually something that happened in a neighborhood that abuts MCNO. There's a there's a smaller little community called Country Club Gardens, and one of their neighborhood presidents appointed somebody to gather all of their sewage and water board bills, and presented that as a bundle to us. And as we were doing that, it dawned on me that as I read my emails and talk to Claire and Nina and Amanda and Holly and look at social media, there are tons of people who have this problem. So what I've asked each neighborhood association to do is to appoint one person um, to be their, their bill repository uh, personnel and to send those to us. And, you know, frankly, everything I would think from April forward is fair game. If, if somebody has a bill you know, before them that is just completely off the rails, um, please feel free to include that too, but it really seems like the problems, um, you know, are, are, are really, you know, before COVID, but have become magnified post COVID as well. So, um, you know, we look forward to getting those and trying to work on them. We realize that that's a, a significant problem um, and we want to try and work on resolving those for as many people as we possibly can. And then the last small thing I have is um, is we're meeting with DPW and the CAO tomorrow about some longstanding 
infrastructure issues in District A. Um, you know, my goal is to kind of go from top to bottom with things that have been lingering for a long time. Uh, this is, you know, a little bit more Faubourg, St. John, and Mid City, but the, there's some places where there's ditching work that allegedly were coming in 2020 that got bumped all, I mean, I'm sorry, 2019, then that got bumped to 2020, now it may be 2021. And, and I just want to make sure, you know, the work is being done the way it's supposed to do. Um, obviously, we were keenly attuned to the issues with Hagen Lafitte that got stopped for a little while and, and, and tracked all of that and made sure um, it got resumed. So um, you know, we obviously know and, and want to make sure as infrastructure issues are popping up that are significant and that have been delayed and being done that, that we're staying on top of those. So that's, that's my report. I'm happy to answer any specific questions. I'm seeing the comments that are popping up about the number of cars and what's going on, and I appreciate that. The, the, you know, the things I would say about that are, instead of calling 311 at this point, I would call 911 um, immediately, 311. Um, I know it's supposed to be the, um, the first uh, level of, um, of use for COVID-related issues, and that's what we're directing people towards. But um, you may get a faster response with 311 uh, and what's going on. And then, you know, obviously, um, Mid-City, I would think Chris is, is aware of this, and, and hopefully there can be some working about dedicating some resources specifically to uh, Haifa to, to focus on this issue um, because it's clearly under people's skin. and. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just I'm watching the comments pop up, pop mm -hmm. up, pop up about yeah. cars and trash and noise, um, you know, that that, you know, using dedicated resources may make a lot of sense. Yeah, it seems to be an unruly crowd. Um, and I mean, if I'm not mistaken, this has been going on before COVID as well. I mean. Is that yeah, I mean, experiences Karen, with the business? I mean, Karen, Karen Ocker sent me an email about that, but I, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I think everybody knows I read all of my emails and respond to all of them. There are a lot of places in my district that I can tell you I know it's been problematic. And I see, I just saw Pete's chat pop up um, that's been going on for months. Mm -hmm. it, it, it may have. But until we know about it, it's hard for us to, like I said, to, to get engaged. Apparently, it's even dated back to Susan's time in office. So sure. it, isn't, it isn't a new thing. It just sounds like it's uh, a, a reemerging thing that has now gone from bad to worse. And so, you know, yeah. we want to we marshal the necessary resources to, to make the neighbors feel better about it. I mean, going back historically, we've, we've noticed um, there were problems even with the development of this business and the development of this property um, that also wasn't in line with some of the zoning when it was being built. So, uh, you know, uh, habitual offenders in various ways, um, hopefully we can, we can come to an agreement with them of some kind. Um, I would really just ask people, like, if you could condense as much of this information and organize it and keep good records of this, including 311 reference numbers. Um, I know, you know, you may not be getting a response to them, but at least we could have a record and a paper trail that we can follow that they, that anyone with the city and enforcement can, can't ignore as far as a reference of all these complaints. So that would help. I'll do some digging on my end as far as the open data is concerned. But also, if you already have that information, please just share it with me um, or in the comment link, uh, president at .org. Um org. We've been in contact with uh, MCSD. They're well aware of it. Um, you know, this is one of those, um, I, I don't know, I, I've heard a lot of frustrations with NOPD 3rd District from a lot of mid-citizens on that side of the lines of NOPD districting and feel like, especially in the city park neighborhood, that we don't get a lot of attention that, that's needed. So I can understand the frustrations with this, considering this is also within that district team. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just say my experience has been 
every community that has a security district tends to feel like they get less responsiveness from the the, the district that they're in than they mm -hmm. than, than they do. So I that that's true across the board. Chad, I just saw your email. I'm happy to get anything from 2015. And you know, Chris, obviously whatever can be assembled, we want to have because there's one thing for an email here or there, um, but a like volume matters and um, mm -hmm. being able to go to either code enforcement safety and permits with like here's a stack right and and look whether whether um, it's good or not the media attention will likely catch you know the view and, and it can't be denied what people are seeing with their own two eyes so um, I think I think that's going to be something else that's helpful in having these conversations too. All right. Um, any more comments on this specifically or any specific questions anyone has for Joe this evening? Yeah. Please feel to get in touch with his office if you want to copy us on any communication. Um, our emails are president at mcno.org or info at mcno.org. Um, so if you want to also just, just carve and copy us on any communication with City Council or, or safety and permits or code enforcement, just let us know to make us aware of the issue as well and see what we can do to help with any information and manpower behind this. Um, I know MCSD has been trying to put a unit over there in the evenings. Uh, I did see one over there last night, um, not directly in front of the property, but two blocks further down. So, I mean, it does have their attention of uh, their organizational structure and enforcement. So we hope to get some some positive attention and rectify this these issues. All right. Yeah, under, I understand the the frustrations as well. Um, and it it really comes to there's a lot of enforcement being put on businesses to through this entire time. Um, a lot of self policing. Um, I'm not making any excuses, but there's a lot more responsibility as part as as part of the safety restrictions that are being put in place that falls on businesses to enforce. So I know that causes even more stress with anyone who runs a business and then having this on top of it is seeing someone flagrant flagrantly disregard these safety guidelines is, is frustrating to say the least. So um, I also encourage you, I included the MCSD uh, meeting information. I believe they're uh, going to be meeting virtually on the 17th. Sorry, I don't have my agenda open right now. Um, I encourage you all to attend. It's much more accessible, obviously, with, um, with our virtual meeting space that everybody's having to deal with. And hopefully, we'll get some more information from NOPD 3rd District. Um, maybe there's something we could do with, uh, you know, a, a neighborhood group adjoining neighbors with the ownership and the property owners of this property. Hopefully we can facilitate, um, if anybody want to help out with any specific contact information, um, of any management and property owners they already know of, uh, please share that with me if you can, and maybe we can set up some sort of direct contact. Um, group meeting with them because I, I mean we all want to see this in, it's more effectively resolved probably in-house you know direct communication with them uh, as well as making sure we're documenting and keeping all the tabs on the complaints as we go so all right okay thank you so much uh, council member um, Stephen, I saw you join just a minute ago. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Good night, everybody. We have a couple announcements. Uh, Stephen Mosgroves from the uh, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Engagement. Hey, everyone. Uh, good to see you. I, I, I must apologize. I am a little late. I'm not. I'm not conveniently on time for my uh, my my part of the meeting. I am late, so I, I think I missed a good conversation about 4740 there. Um, Chris, I'll loop back sure. uh, with you to to 
get the intel on that. Um, I don't have much uh, per se. Um, there are a lot of things uh, that uh, are going on. Sometimes our office and our role to connect city government to our associations and our residents, uh, we're doing a lot of um, capacity uh, uh, capacity building and, and outreach and, and opportunities for residents to uh, connect with the city government. So there are a few things going on I wanted to mention. Um, one is, of course, uh, you're, you're most likely very well aware about the COVID-19 meals program. Well, a few days ago, um, that program was, was, was extended for another uh, 30 days. Um, and that, just to be clear, is uh, a meals program, a partnership with FEMA uh, in their response uh, category of service um, and, and the city to uh, use local restaurants to to make meals and have them delivered or picked up pick, picked up by residents who are food insecure. So uh, if you know anyone with the need, uh, please encourage them to call 311 and get into the system. If, if not, uh, just spread the word uh, within your, your networks. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention, and 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 Chris and Jordan may have uh, shed uh, or spread this information uh, out to you, but the city is looking for, <clears throat> through its uh, city-assisted evacuation plan, is looking for volunteers to person the uh, the evacuation spots. Uh, we're pretty well staffed in a number of areas, but we're a little light in District A, specifically the Palmer Park and the Mater De La Rosa uh, pickup locations. So if there's anybody who um, is interested in, 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 in volunteering in that role, I encourage you to reach out to me. Um, there is a training tomorrow. Um, and, and, and so uh, if you're interested, get, get with me um, uh, as quickly as you can. Uh, you know, for those who don't know, my email is Stephen with a ph dot mossgrove at nola dot gov, uh, and and we can get that to you if you need it repeated. Um, something to keep in mind: the profile of a good volunteer is someone who's who's calm, can communicate well, both listen and 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 uh, direct orders. Um, is self assured. You know, kind of deal with uh, you know you won't get your feelings hurt of someone who's stressed uh, miles off at you while you're trying to help them that type of uh, environment. So really uh, in, in, in energy, it's a 12 hour shift. So I do come to MCNO with a particular um, ask uh, for, for someone from the organization or the neighborhood to, to, to step up. Y'all are, are great volunteers uh, and, and you have a lot of folks um, from whom you can draw. Uh, third thing of course is my, my census mantra, please, uh, please encourage folks throughout your networks to respond to the census. We're seeing a slight uptick, um, but uh, we, we like to see that, uh, uh, you know, those response rates increase a lot more. One thing to keep in mind is just last week, the federal government changed the deadline uh, for Americans to respond to the census. It changed from October 31st uh, to September 30th. So that shortens the window uh, for for us to respond to the, the const constitutionally mandated census, uh, which is critical to resources and quality of life for, for every location, but we're focused on our city, New Orleans and, and the metro area in Louisiana. Um, so um, that the, the, the census and responses to the census um, are a really good opportunity for uh, civic-minded folks such as yourselves to, to really um, make that an issue and, and get, get on board and encourage folks to to do that, so please keep that top of mind. And and lastly, I just wanted to thank um, uh, the board for any communications you may have done to, to spread the word with um, our office's quality of life discussion on July 30th. Uh, I hosted a, a quality of life discussion uh, for District A residents uh, on the 30th, and, and we and we had a few guests. Our main guest was was Bob Turner, uh, General Superintendent from the Sewage and Water Board. Uh, as well as Matt Torrey from the Sanitation Department and and Adele London from the Census. So um, thanks for those who 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 uh, uh, helped out with that. Um, it was a good hour of information. Um, Chris, if you if you want, uh, I, I don't remember if I sent that presentation to you, uh, 
but if you want it, I can certainly uh, send it to you and you can share for those who didn't, who didn't make it that day. So, um, sure. but that's about it. And if I missed anything while the councilman was talking that uh, could have been um, something that came to me or you need some input from me, I'm more than happy to, to catch up. Yeah, I mean, just uh, some continued success of gathering around that property on the street, the Hyper Bar. Um, yeah. Some, I mean, I'm not sure if, if 301 is catching up. I'm not sure how dispatch is going on with enforcement. I'm not sure if, I mean, do you know if if some of the restrictions are being enforced strictly by NOPD or is there other departments working with this as well? Yeah, safety and permits. Um, it does some of that as well. Um, I did hear you talk about uh, the, the the responsibilities of business owners, and and that is real. And and um, it's a it's a it's a very interesting time because um, you know uh, in recent weeks I have felt that that you know we're asking a lot of um, uh, we're asking our residents for a lot of things, including volunteers and. And, and, and pitching in and things of that sort. Um, and business owners have certainly been uh, uh, asked to, to be eyes and ears. Uh, they have to register with the fire marshal. They have to get uh, uh, signage and, and other things that indicate uh, the rules of, the, of, uh, of engaging with that business. Uh, that's difficult. But ultimately, ultimately, Chris, um, a call to 311 um, or in NOPD directly but the calls to 311 go to uh, go to NOPD, um, and so uh, there are some there's responsibility from the businesses, but uh, but that's mainly to be the eyes and ears, you know. And if there's a problem, call call NOPD, and they they are expected to to make these issues a priority. It is a is a major public health. Um, uh, 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 situation, so they are expected to take uh, those calls seriously uh, and respond with efficiency. So, yeah, yeah. Um, all the more reason that we just need to kind of track it on our, ourselves for our own accountability um, and definitely kind of condense things, you know, to identify our the you know habitual offenders and and hot spots in this. So. Yeah, um, yeah. If if there's any help that y'all can give, um, uh, just yeah, let us know. Because um, because uh, more serious action can be taken uh, for chronic violators. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Um, yeah, send me that uh, presentation. I'd be happy to to post it post it on mcno.org. Um, Will do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just to remind people, uh, first city court runoff election, uh, early voting has ended. To, make, to cast your ballot, you're going to have to go to a polling place this Saturday the 15th. I believe tomorrow is the deadline to request an absentee ballot for this runoff election for first city court. Again, this is um, small claims and property evictions uh, is the main purview of this judgeship. So. Um, please vote. Please turn out. Um, these things definitely matter to a lot of people, and uh, especially nowadays. Um, also, keep in mind we're we're going to do a full rundown of uh, election access and a lot of the candidates coming up, since it's going to be a very busy and a very full election um, ballot coming up in November with the DA's race, uh, school board, and then of course uh, federal races and other state races. So please keep a lookout for that. We're going to have some more resources and information to send out to everyone. Um, and something I wasn't really aware of, and with more and more people voting uh, absentee, uh, to send your ballot in may require extra postage. So I know some people may not be aware, but um, it may require more than just one first class stamp because of sometimes the size of these ballots. Uh, when voting absentee. So if anybody's voting absentee for the first time, um, I'll try and get some more information on this, but just be aware that you may to send your, your completed ballot back in may require extra postage. All right. Um, this Wednesday, the District B Food Pantry is going to continue their weekly 
uh, food pantry giveaway uh, at Goodwill on Tulane Avenue. Still, uh, volunteers are always needed, uh, coordinated through uh, Council Member Banks's office. That phone number is 504 658 1020. Um, it is a, a constant need. I don't know if you've noticed the traffic and the amount of cars that line up down Tulane Avenue on Wednesday mornings, um, and they're doing their best to get uh, the people in need the supplies they need. Um, I believe that is all the announcements I had. Um, the Security District Commissioner's meeting is Wednesday, August 19th, 6 p.m. Uh, please check their website and social media for any further announcements that may they may have about their upcoming meetings. Uh, our next general meeting is going to be September 14th, 6 p.m., probably also still online and virtual. Um, and so please use info at mcno.org or, or the uh, comment sheet that's linked if you need to present or want to add anything to those general meetings agendas. Um, our block captains are our super uh, involved volunteers with the organization. They meet once a week and their next meeting is August 17th. If, uh, if you're interested in that program or want to sign up to be a block captain, uh, please either contact us through the, the all the same ways, info at mcno.org or uh, block captains at mcno.org. And uh, our next board meeting is going to be held on August 25th, also virtually. If you had any business to the board uh, or anything that we need to be aware of or take any actions on, um, please let us know at all the same info at mcnote.org. All right. Well, that's everything I have this evening, unless anybody has uh, any outstanding business or questions or any items. please. Check out our Katrina 15, K15 service project days that we're trying to organize. That's mcno.org slash K15. Um, at the very least, you're you, you know doing things like cleaning up catch basins and trash pickups. But uh, we, you could be rewarded with a gift card that could benefit our local businesses. So please, uh, we'll have more information. Look for us to publicize that more. That's all I have for this evening, and thank you for attending. I appreciate the turnout.